Uh, let's check in with Scott Gam on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange for more of the market action we're seeing right now. Scott? All right, Zach, thank you. I am joined now by David Bonson, the founder and chief investment officer at the Bonson Group. So, David, we've got stocks falling over the past couple of weeks. Do you think now is a good time to put more money to work? I think that in one's asset allocation, if they had had some cash in dry powder, they can start to pick some spots. I don't think anything's washed out. I don't think anything looks dirt cheap. From where we were to like valuation right now, you might be down 3%. It's not hyper compelling, but in energy, there might be some names that really look attractive. So you got to look at your portfolio and determine what's come down the most if you have cash available. I wouldn't be rushing in and I wouldn't be doing it at an expectation you're going to have some prolonged volatility over the course of this uncertainty that the trade war maintains. I think it gives you a chance to come in, pick up at good prices. And you're not doing index investing. You're not putting money into the S&P. No, we're not. It's not what we do anyways, but especially in this environment, you're even with the drop, you're really at about 17 times. So you're about fairly valued, a little on the high side. Now, markets often go well past their median valuation. But to me, there's things within the market that are undervalued, and we're cash flow generative investors. We want companies paying dividends and growing their dividends, so we're going to focus more in there. Bottom up, good quality companies, because you want to be defensive through this period. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world right now. What do you make of the relationship between stocks and interest rates? Because we've got the 10-year yield at its lowest level since the end of 2017. And even at that point, the S&P 500 was lower than, than where it is now. Yeah, it's, I'll tell you what the lesson in it is. Is A year ago, we were talking about, oh my God, the 10 years at 3 and it's going to 4. Now we're talking about it's at 2.3 and is it going to go to 2? So, so we, the, this is the sort of tug of war that exists macroeconomically. I think it's going to exist for 20 more years. The push-pull forces of inflation versus versus deflation. But the deflationary forces have been winning for over 10 years. The amount of debt that's built up in the economy tells me that that pushes rates down, not up, because it suppresses economic growth. That's the problem we have right now. The Fed brought the short rate up, but the long rate is saying we don't expect there to be growth, so you end up with this really flat yield curve. Just very, very quickly, do you think the Fed comes in and saves any type of market volatility? It seems like investors believe the Fed will save this market no matter what. First, let me say, I hope they don't. I think it will rep- it will just add more leverage into the credit sector that doesn't need more leverage. But do I think they will? I think it will depend how bad things get in risk assets. The Fed, for right or for wrong, since 1998, has seen themselves as a savior of risk assets. And we'll see how it plays out the rest of the year. I don't think it will be at the next meeting. All right, David, we'll leave it there. Thank you, as always. All right, Zach, back to you.